news, everyone. San Diego Comic-Con just blew up, really. It's it just uh, with incredible news to a certain point of view. And, like, the biggest one I just want to talk about, it, it, which jumped off late last night when I was asleep, and I couldn't really uh, jump in because I had to go to work today, so I couldn't just jump in to talk about it until I got home. But uh, before I continue, please uh, leave a comment below. Let me know what you guys think of this massive news of... Robert Downey Jr. coming back to the MCU, not as Iron Man, but as Dr. Doom. Follow me on links in the description below. Smash that like button. Let's begin. So, now, I'm of two minds about it. Well, one leaning slightly more than the other. Look. I love Robert Downey Jr. He's an incredible actor. I love a lot of his films. And he played an incredible character in the MCU and had the most impressive arc from Iron Man 1 to Endgame. And he had the most satisfying ending out of all the other characters uh, in the MCU. But... This screams of desperation any way you kind of slice it. Now, like my misgivings about casting Pedro Pascal as Reed Richards, casting Robert Downey Jr. as Dr. Doom is, of course, they're going to, obviously, because they're great actors, they'll give a good performance. That's not being put into question. What's being put into question Two things. One, out of all the actors you could have brought in to play this character, you reached, you, know, you pulled up several dump trucks full of Brinks money to Robert Downey Jr.'s house and the Russo brothers' house because they're coming back to direct the next, you know, couple of Avengers films. Now they booted the entire, you know, Kang Dynasty thing. And then doing uh, Avengers Doomsday and Avengers uh, Avengers Doomsday and Avengers Secret Wars, which obviously is going to be referencing the event where Doctor Doom remade the universe and became God Doom and stuff like that. Obviously, and then you know mix it in with the uh, Secret Wars, where you know like the Beyonder had like this battle world thing between a bunch of heroes versus a bunch of villains uh, that sort of thing and that's cool in its own right now Ari had you know at least a couple of uh, videos talking about how I feel it was kind of wrong to just whatever your feelings towards Jonathan Majors with behind the scenes with this whole court thing I think you know it yeah, I seen the video. He was running away from that girl. I don't think, you know, Disney just retroactively uh, dump the, uh, this actor who's an incredible actor, you know, in, in his own right, and just completely dumped them and shelved the character in his entirely. You have incredible writers. You can make Kang uh, appealing to a wider audience. Plus, you should have done a better job connecting. Uh, the multiverse thing that you're you're doing multiverse things very randomly without you know interconnecting them a lot better so people can be hyped for Kang but you could have at least recasted the character but whatever but given the fact that what Robert Downey Jr. uh overcame before he got the role as Iron Man you would think you know, you would give Jonathan Majors another shot. It was kind of, you know, ironic. But in any case, you could have, you know, like, why it had to be Robert Downey Jr.? People always already suspected that they was going to bring him in 
for uh, Secret Wars is like the they still gonna touch on the multiverse stuff. They just ain't gonna do anything with Kang. But you could have like uh, people suspected he's gonna come back as another version of Iron Man for like a little bit of a cameo for that Secret Wars movie. But casting him as Iron Man, I mean casting him as Doctor Doom, it's like there's no shade on Robert Downey Jr. Robert Downey Jr. He's you know, you know, he, he has a good working relationship with a lot of these people and the Russo brothers and you know and he's a great actor and so it's like I'm not faulting him. It's just that you know, Killian Murphy. John Hamm, a lot of people who haven't been in the MCU yet, you could have like gotten some new face to the character instead of reaching back into the well of older actors. This is where the uh, desperation rears his head. You clearly needed like a guaranteed win. And you knew full well, like, okay, clearly Robert Downey Jr. is the big draw. And people will guarantee to come see or continue on watching your stuff up until we see him in the next couple of Avengers films. To guarantee people come to see uh, your stuff because, you know, because you saw the right on the wall. Because behind the scenes, they're, you know, trying to get rid of the DEI programs and you know, shifting a lot of stuff around. I give him credit, doing a better job than Lucasfilm right now. But it just it's like it's like an ex trying to desperately win you back. That's how it's looking. And like people expect Doctor Doom to come into the MCU because you obviously got the Fantastic Four. But it's just that you could have gotten any new people or just superb actors like John Hamm or Killian Murphy that haven't been in the MCU yet to come in to play Dr. Doom. There's a myriad of impressive actors on the same caliber as Robert Downey Jr. who could have done this. You gave, uh, it kind of cheapens, you know, uh, I know this is like a part of a variant of, uh, a Doctor Doom that's just happened to have Tony Stark's face. It might be a little torn up because Doctor Doom has a, like a messed up face and everything like that. But it just you're cheaping the death of Tony Stark by bringing back the actor just because he's playing like a different character altogether. It still cheapens it a bit. So it's like it, it his sacrifice almost meant nothing. If you look at it that way, because it kind of cheapens it. And I don't know. It's just like, yeah, I suspect it will he will do a great job. But anybody on that actor's level could equally do that particular job, if not probably better. Like, I don't know, Brian Cranston as Doctor Doom would have been awesome. Just, you know, they have that kind of gravitas. Uh, like, you know, it, it's just, I don't know, like, why it had to be Robert Downey Jr.? Oh, I know why. Cause like I said, like, you want guaranteed butts and seats because you, you know, there's been stuff in Phase 4 and a couple of stuff in Phase 5 of the MCU that I personally liked. It wasn't all perfect, but, you know, there were you know, some poor projects, you know, uh, and then the fact that y'all wasn't having y'all ducks in a row before you start rolling out stuff for the Disney Plus and everything like that, you, you, you was, you know, kind of rushing and you put out like, you know, more stuff uh, than uh, you was too concerned about putting out stuff rather than making sure everything was finely tuned before you start putting out to the masses and now you put yourself in a corner where you're trying to make sure you don't you know 
you know, have this entire franchise coming down like a house of cards. So you like kind of like the Mandalorian in Book of Boba Fett. You bring him in halfway through because you see like, oh, my God, this stuff is kind of boring. Let's bring in the ringer to guarantee, you know, because God forbid what you will do with uh, Chris Evans, Captain America. It's like, you know, like, oh, like we need a Magneto. Let's get Chris Evans back as Magneto. Just, you know, because we need, you know, that actor. And it's like, no, you don't. I love Chris Evans. I love Robert Downey Jr. A lot of these people who play in these characters, by and large, are in, are incredible actors in their own right. Even uh, uh, Amon Vellani, who played Miss Marvel, is great in her own right. Not to the same caliber as Robert Downey Jr., but she's great in her own right. And you just really have to... I mean, I'm pretty sure they are getting their ducks in a row now. But it, it, it's just like... this. I want, it's not miscasting. It's just needless casting. And I just... Uh, I, I, I'm just not feeling it partially because I only say partially because I know he'll still do a good job because I know his merit. But uh, it's just like, like you, gotta, you could at least have 15 actors you can choose from from Hollywood that has not been in MCU to play this character. It's just, you know, it, it's desperate. You're, you're, you're desperate. And... I don't know. It's just like I, you know, I, I'm not saying I'm not thrilled, but I'm not happy. It's, it, I got a mid type of emotion to it. And of course, I'm not doubting I will all be impressed. But in the back of my mind, I will always be thinking, man, there's at least a handful of dudes that could have, you know, pull off this role just as good as Robert Downey Jr. And like, I don't know. It's, huh, it, it, you know, it's weird. It's like a weird feeling. Uh, I, you know, I mean, it's only like a short little video that I want to talk about. You know, because I want to talk about this really quick. Uh, cause I couldn't just do this on my TikTok or, or, or like uh, Instagram or anything like that. I, I just had to it really speak on this. It, it just, you know. It's like, you know, I, I, I don't know. I could be wrong. Like, I might be wrong. About, like, you know, well, I'm pretty sure people will completely forget about all this once they see the performance and get blown away. But it's just like, there are certain casting choices that I call into question. Off the top of my head was Robert Downey Jr. and Pedro Pascal. It's like, it's especially Pedro Pascal, it's like, you know, this dude is everywhere, and it's kind of like you're going to water down his brand if you put him in every little thing. Of course, you're going to say yes, because he's not going to say no to money. But it's just that, you know, you, you're you bringing in the Fantastic Four. Now call it, they finally got a title for the Fantastic Four movie called First Steps, which is kind of like a harken to the uh, line from uh, Buzz Aldrin with like first small step for mankind kind of thing, which is already confusing with the premise where it's like, first it was like, okay, you're, you know, they were, you know, a first family in the sixties traveling to space, probably got caught up, you know, uh, into the negative zone after you get bombarded with cosmic rays comes out is 40 years into the future now they're in a mainline uh, MCU story. But then you got to, you know, you know, uh, throw a hat on a hat by saying like, oh, it's in the past, but from a different dimension. Like, why you got to add on that? That's part is like I'm really confused about. Like, why you got to add on that? Like, you know, it's probably fine. We just, you know, had it in the 60s, which is like his own little pocket timeline where it's completely separate from wherever like you know captain america did and way before miss marvel was ever a thing 
or uh, Captain Marvel was ever a thing. It's a nice little chunk in and of itself. Then it's like, you know, you know they got, you know, they, you know, flew out and got lost. Never heard from him again. Thought was dead. Then came back. Uh, same age. Uh, but now, in, like, a further in the future. You could have just left it at that. I don't think it was needed to also add on the fact that not only is it in the past, but the past from a different dimension. Then the, don't get me started with the whole female uh, shallow ball, silver surfer thing. It's like, I don't know why you need to do that. It was pointless. It was just it really was nothing to just make a regular silver surfer that is male that we all familiar with. Uh, it's changed for change sake. Uh, but then, like, the whole casting of Pedro Pascal is like, Pedro Pascal what, is in his 50s right now. He's expected, like, you know, like, you could, you know, a lot of the other people are fairly young, and you're going to expect to have the Fantastic Four for a good, like, 10 plus years. So it's like, you could have gotten, you know, relatively fresh faces for everybody, especially if he wasn't going to cast John Krasinski. You could have had fresh faces for a lot of these people. Like, you know, one of the dudes I think who's playing Ben Grimm was microchipping the uh, the Punisher TV show. So it's like, I I don't know how many people watch the Punisher TV show. So I guess you can slightly get away with that. But you can still would have gotten like a because the other two who play Sue and Johnny are relatively new faces. You could just you know because you was MCU was good at this. From the way at the beginning, casting certain people who we might have been familiar with one movie they done before, or from a, a play or something like that. Nobody knew who Chris Hemsworth or Tom Hiddleston were, you know, prior to the MCU. Tom Hiddleston was like doing plays before he was cast as Loki, who was auditioning for Thor at first, and Chris Hemsworth was like in that Cabin in the Woods or something like that. He was in some kind of horror movie prior to the MCU. So it's just like they were fresh faces. And you could have like kept that train going. I mean, you done well here and there, like with Tom Holland and Amon Vellani and uh uh Tatiana Maslani when it comes to new people. And of course like the woman who played uh uh the Scarlet Scarab in Moon Knight and like uh the two main leads in the werewolf by night. So yeah, from time to time you have been, you know, hiring fresh faces into the MCU, but you know, you got them because you can expect them to be contractually obligated to come in for a good 10 to 20 years at this stuff. You hiring like, you know, these A-list actors that especially A-list actors who are like late forties, early fifties, who, will start wanting to bow out pretty quickly after, you know, the second Avengers film they are cast in. Uh, it's, it's just like, you know, uh, you could have just gotten like a new person for Reed Richards and have us, because that's the thing. It's like, I didn't see Chris Hemsworth as uh, playing Thor. I just saw a guy, I just saw like Thor. Uh, same way, like, you know, because now, like, every time you see Tom Hiddleston in something, you just see Loki, you know, because he was so great, and that was that character for a long time. So, now you're looking at, like, I don't see, like, a Reed Richards. I see Pedro Pascal playing Reed Richards. Uh, like, I see, like, him, like, uh, or, or, like, you know, oh, I see just Din Jaren as uh, playing Reed Richards at this point. It is, you you gotta like expand because I guess you know Hollywood doesn't like to take risk with you know fresh faces. They only do it like every so often, but it's not like because they, they need to flip it where their main you know job when it comes to casting is like making sure they always get like fresh faces and then on occasion hiring like a list actors from stuff here and there and. and it, right now it's kind of like reverse where it's like they're you know they got guaranteed butts and seats so we gotta cast like a-list actors in most of the films you're you know that you're 
or, or TV shows that you're producing. And that is kind of annoying. Uh, yeah, I want to grow into these, you know, actors and have them grow into these characters uh, so we can associate with them and empathize with them and things of that nature. Because you got like Harrison Ford as General Ross and it's like, yeah, uh, he's a great actor. It's kind of like a poor example, but just, you know, it's kind of the same way when you hired Harrison Ford back in the day as Indiana Jones. He was the right person for the job, the audition and everything like that. He, you know, grew into this character to make it his own. Now, if there's anybody else who plays Indy, all we see is somebody else, at least at the very least, get like a new face. Instead of like casting, I don't know, like Chris Pratt, Indiana Jones. And it's like, it doesn't work. It does not work. Uh, but anyway, it's just, you know, a certain casting, you know, choices has been kind of lackluster in my opinion. I just can't get with it. But maybe you guys have like a different difference of opinion about it. Uh, but I'm curious to know what you guys think. Cause I just, uh, God, just circling back to the whole Dr. Doom of it all. It's just, I don't know. You could have at least several other actors you can have chose from. Cause clearly this is a desperate move to save your bottom line. Uh, but that's just in, in conclusion about that. It's just like, yeah, this is screams desperation and, uh, you gotta, you know, like, you gotta let you know this actor rest. And of course, he's not gonna say no. Pedro Pascal is not gonna say no. None of these actors are gonna say no to money and being to these, you know, blockbusters to guarantee more revenue in their uh, pockets. They're not gonna, you know, say no for a fat check from Disney. I wouldn't expect them to. I wouldn't do it. Uh, but it's just like on the people who are you know, the casting director and, and, uh, and like Bob Iger is, and Kevin Feige, it's like, it's them who making these type of decisions because they know their bottom line is going to get hurt. Not the actors. Cause they, they're just there for a job. But of course they like it and they like working with each other, but it just, it, it's mostly on, you know, like Bob Iger, Kevin Feige and, and, uh, whoever the casting director is, it's like on them because, you know, they should have just put like a, some kind of open call or look at some kind of new person at like a play or some uh, who uh, worked in some kind of indie film or something like that to bring on to these projects to, you know, because stop, because that's the thing, if I'm going to bring it to some kind of conclusion, start recycling the same actors over and over again. It's not entertaining at all. Uh, he, he, at a certain point, you gotta let them rest and bring in some new faces if you're going to continue on with the MCU. Because some people are theorizing after Secret Wars, they're going to just kind of like soft reboot the entire thing and start from the from the beginning, which it's kind of a shame. But at the same time, I would have rather them just like uh, I think. That would have been like a good final ending to this entire, uh, f- you know, franchise. But of course, they won't go go and do that. It's too much money to be made. Uh, they can just soft reboot, I guess, after uh, Secret Wars. But who knows? Uh, they might just still keep on trucking uh, until you know the sun burns out. Uh, but anyway. Let me know what you guys think. Uh, this is something I've been wanting to talk about like as soon as I got home. But uh, anyway, take care. I will see you guys. Uh, yeah, I'll probably see you guys uh, tomorrow late evening. I got some stuff to take care of tomorrow. Uh, but I'll see you guys late evening for some more uh, video game content. But take care and have a great weekend. Peace.